This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. Hot, steamy night in the Gateway City as the Cardinals look for a sweep over the Cincinnati Reds. Last night, in many ways, the mistakes caught up with the Reds. Chu and Bruce with miscues early on. And when it looked like that they may have had some momentum, they ran themselves out of innings and out of game number two. In a pennant race, many times it's the little things that winning teams execute that get them over the top. Which team will execute in game number three? And welcome to St. Louis Cardinals baseball. That's the mad Hungarian Al Roboski. I'm Dan McLaughlin. What a homestand this has been. Very dangerous at the start of this homestand, looking at it on paper. The Atlanta Braves, one of the best teams in baseball. The Cardinals take three of four. And then Al Cincinnati coming to town. You know what lies ahead with them. And yet the Cardinals have uh, handled their business. Yeah, they've won five straight series. And the Cardinals in this series against the Reds have just absolutely dominated. Five and one on the homestand, two for two against the Reds. And just look at this differential. They're just going out there. They're scoring. But the biggest thing is they're getting the excellent starting pitching. And it hopefully will continue here tonight. Adam Wainwright getting the start for St. Louis. And the author of two no-hitters, Homer Bailey for the Cincinnati Reds. Reds and Cardinals coming up tonight on Fox Sports Midwest. We saw him go the distance against the team that originally drafted him, the Atlanta Braves. Everything was working that night. The 12 to 6 bender, the cutter. He was sensational. And now you look up, league leader in wins. Adam Wainwright is right there, and he has been among the best this season in the NL. And Adam Wainwright with that five, uh, fifth complete game this season, that's more than all the other teams in the Central Division that they have. Adam is also six 
strikeouts away from second place all by himself. He'll pass Dizzy Dean on the St. Louis all time strikeout list. On the other side, it's a guy that has struggled. Highest ERA at Bush Stadium. We saw Matt Latos last night. Homer Bailey tonight starter for the Reds, 6.90 overall this season. Bailey two games below 500. ERA is under four, and we'll see the hard throwing right hander tonight. Homer Bailey has made seven starts here at Bush Stadium. The team is 0 and 7. He's 0 and 5 with that 690 ERA. Cardinals hitters have hit four home runs off him this year, and he's given up at least one home run in each of his last four starts. Bailey. Wainwright, pair of right handers, and Alan Craig is in the lineup tonight. Cards and Reds coming up. tonight and we turn to our Barnes Jewish Hospital difference maker. He'll bat third for Mike Matheny's club and play left field and he's been on a tear. The difference maker Matt Holliday last seven games in RBI in each of those games. First time he's ever done that in his career. Will it carry over to tonight? A good chance that it will. Matt Holliday against Homer Bailey the starter of the Reds is 12 for 30 with three doubles and two home runs. Holiday in the lineup tonight. It's the Cards. It's the Reds. It's game number three. How about a sweep? We'll find out tonight on Fox Sports Midwest.
of Alan Craig. One of the top hitters in baseball with a grand slam late. Then in game number two, after some Reds miscues, the Cardinals came through with timely hitting. Matt Holliday, RBIs in seven straight. The RBI machine, Alan Craig. Some insurance late from David Freeze. It added up to another game two win. Game number three, John Jay is in the lineup. It's the Cards, it's the Reds. A pennant race next. Cincinnati now four and a half games out inside the central division and the Cardinals turned to big number 50 tonight Adam Wainwright to get the start for St. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Budweiser great times are waiting designated driver see your mid-america Chevy dealer or log on to sdlchevy.com Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers number one for quality tires and expert auto service Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And buy steak and shake. Steak and shake. Just no equal. Beautiful night for baseball as we welcome you inside Bush Stadium. The Cards, the Reds in game number three at Al Raboski's Toyota Keys to the game. Well, you want to finish this home strong. Uh, homestand very strong. You've five and one right now. Six and one would look great. And the Cardinals, a new battery. Molina's getting a little rest today. Two for one with the off day tomorrow. And so Adam Wainwright will be there with Johnson. And you know Adam, he'd take charge of his ball game. So that's not going to phase him. Might bother some of the younger uh, starters, but not Adam Wainwright. So go out here and just attack the Cincinnati Reds. Cardinals take to the field. Matt Carpenter, what a season he has had. The Cardinals second baseman has now scored 100 runs. That's most in the National League. Let's take a look at that Cincinnati lineup for Dusty Baker's club. They've got to get something going. Shin Su Chu homered here last night. Brandon Phillips moves up to the second spot in the lineup. Then Joey Votto, Jay Bruce, batting cleanup. Ryan Ludwig off to a sluggish start back off the DL. Todd Frazier dropped down in this lineup. He's only hitting 232. Zach Cozart, Ryan Hannigan, and the pitcher Homer Bailey, a 133 hitter. The Cardinals defense is presented by Dobbs as we go around the horn. 
Matt Holliday in left, John Jay in center, Beltron is in right. Freeze into Scalso on the left side of the infield. Carpenter and Craig on the right side. Rob Johnson is out told you, different battery tonight. He's behind the plate. He'll be catching your Kia starter coming off a complete game at 128 pitches last time out. Adam Wainwright. Well, Adam's got a lot of things going for him. He's going to be the first National League 16 game winner. He already has five complete games. That leads the league. You'll see the good ERA. He'll go over the 200 innings pitch mark tonight. And he's six strikeouts away for second place in the Cardinals all-time strikeout list. It'll be Gibson, then Adam Wainwright, and then uh, Dizzy Dean and Chris Carpenter. So a lot of things good and everything good for the Cardinals or for their ace, Adam Wainwright. Center fielder for the Reds, Shin Su Chu leads it off. The buzz here at the ballpark. The Cardinals playing so well and have won another series and looking for a sweep tonight. Chu looks at a strike and he's hitting 278, 17 home runs, and he's driven in 41. You know, Dusty Baker looks back at last night's game, Alan. I know you had a chance to visit with him. He's frustrated right now trying to get his team going. Yeah, it's just one of those things where, you know, they had a golden opportunity, couldn't close out the game one of the series. Yesterday, they were a little sluggish. Pass the diving Carpenter and into center field and a leadoff hit. I do expect them to come play a little more inspired baseball, and Dusty did his part to kind of juggle the lineup, and I kind of question what he did. Move up a guy with 95 RBIs to the second spot in the lineup. And what I would have done is I would have left Brandon Phillips in the cleanup spot. He's got the 95 RBIs you said. I would have put Bottle, who's the third place hitter. Bottle with a 431 on base percentage. Remember, he's got 102 walks, but it seems like Bottle was more concerned about getting on bases on base percentage than driving in runs. Base hit for Phillips out to left, and the first two have reached. And now you get Votto here with two runners on, with Jay Bruce to follow. Brandon Phillips had a confrontation, by the way, with a, a, a reporter for uh, Cincinnati prior to the game, and that's just kind of making its way around the media, but apparently profanity-laced and not the first time, won't be the last time we see a reporter and an athlete get into it. And apparently what he almost did too is tucked his head into Dusty Baker's office where he's had a meeting with all the writers and called out the writer right in front of everybody else. Doesn't help. Now it's Votto. Ground ball that's pulled foul. Aggressive here early. These first three hitters against Wainwright. Votto is hitting 311. 20 home runs and 61 RBIs, but the on base percentage outstanding at 431. So, why not put him in front of a dangerous hitter like Phillips, you know, who's third in, in the National League just by now, and Craig with his 95 RBIs? Bottle may not get to 75 RBIs this year. Begs the question what do you pay for? Do you pay a guy 20, 25 million dollars for a 431 on base percentage, or do you pay him? to hit home runs and drive in runs. Any way you want to look at it, he's still a very good player, obviously. No doubt, no doubt. Former MVP in the National League, and he just is a contributor, four straight all-star appearances, leads the National League in walks, intentional walks, and on-base percentage. And he hitless in the first two games of this series. He had hit in all 12 games against St. Louis prior to this series. 2-1 pitch to Votto. Good breaking ball. 75 miles an hour. Evens it up at 2-2. Two and two. Talked about it last night. The Reds have four players in their lineup with 100 or more strikeouts. Votto being one of those four. Plaza tire service replay. I know Allen has an impeccable control, so they came out swinging at that first pitch. He's trying to get ahead. But he can start to be a, pay a little more attention right now and trying to spot his pitches and go out there and do the battle. You may get him to bend a little bit, but 
very tough to get him to break. And this is his third start against the Reds. He's one and one. He lost a game here, two to one to the Reds. Then he won one in Cincinnati, but an ERA of 2.57 coming in. Votto among that group that has struggled against Wainwright in his career, a 130 hitter. This season, 318 with runners in scoring position. A 3 2 pitch. And he walked him, bases loaded. Rear walk issued by Adam Wainwright. I mentioned it before, Al, 128 pitches, and I think you always wonder. Maybe not so much with a guy like Wainwright, but others. How do they respond in their next start? Well, it just seems like today's pitchers aren't accustomed to going that deep into a game. Used to be a starter would usually throw between 120, 130 pitches to complete a game. That used to be about the average, but that's a couple decades ago. The Cardinals starters the last six games, so during this homestand. They have walked only eight. That's number nine on the homestand from the starters and a strike to Jay Bruce. And only the 26th walk of the year for Adam Wainwright. And he's at 198 and two thirds innings pitch. Amazing. It's about what he did last year in his first year coming back from Tommy John. Way outside and caught by Johnson. One ball, one strike. Let's see Wainwright. Struggling maybe here with his release point early on. A couple of those pitches have sailed. There's an awful lot of pitchers in the Hall of Fame that come out of that bullpen, struggle in the first inning, then they find themselves and shut you down. <laughs> Get the benefit of that one, breaking ball back door. Hit out to center field. One run is in. Here comes another. Throw scoots away from Descalso. A base hit into center field by Bruce. RBIs 83 and 84. And a two run lead here for Cincinnati. That ball was smoked. I figured the. Reds are going to come out here and they're going to be a little more anxious to see Rob Johnson glove was inside then he had to reach back over the middle of the plate and two will score as well as Phillips Brandon Phillips come around Reds had the two nothing lead and still nobody out. Ludwig is hitting 225. Runners at first and second. And he hits it down the left field line. This ball is hooking. And it is a fair ball. Stays in the ballpark. They'll hold up the runner, Bruce, who would have scored easily. You're absolutely I mean, that, right. He would have scored easily. But with nobody out, I mean, Mark Berry decided to be a little conservative. So it's a double for Ludwig. And the double makes it three to nothing. Still nobody out. And this almost left the ballpark. But again, I'm shocked that Jay Bruce didn't score on this play. You see that it uh, stays fair. And it looked like Bruce wanted to run over his third base coach anyway and score. I think he was shocked too. The play was in front of him. Nobody out, so you don't want to run into an out. But I think I saw it the way you saw it, that there was no chance the Cardinal defense was going to throw him out at the plate. So Ludwig does pick up one RBI. It's his third on the year. Remember, he's only appearing about his 14th game since coming off the disabled list. He was injured the opening day in Cincinnati, sliding into third base. 
And a ground ball that's hit to the right side. Carpenter playing back and they'll get the out. Four to nothing Cincinnati. Remember they jumped out to a four run lead in game one of this series and then it was the three run homer hit by a holiday and then the Cardinals came back late in that game and they'll have to do that again this evening. Remember that said Bailey's given up home runs and at least one in his last four starts and the Cardinals have hit four home runs against him this year at the infield in and not to give him any more. Here's Zach Cozart has more RBIs than anybody for the Reds here in the month of August triple in game one and an RBI. And not the kind of start that we were expecting here from Adam Wainwright his career against the Reds he is two games below 500 only one win at home. Backhanded very nicely by Craig and no one at the back. So Cozart with his good speed makes it runners at first and third and still only one out. Now when Craig saw that he had Ludwig coming down the line so he's going to stop here and get a good angle here to watch what we're talking about. See the second baseman also remember Adam Wainwright. Why is he not going over to cover first base. But then it's too late Carpenter doesn't react quick enough and maybe it's the Cardinals right now that are having a little bit of a wall. Might have been able to go to third too as Ludwig was starting towards home plate and had to get back. Either way runners head first and third one down and here is Hannigan. And the ball scoots away from Johnson a wild pitch by Wainwright five to nothing Cincinnati. Can we start this game over. Wow. Just looking, just see that arm angle so badly as he throws that ball and then trying to pick it backhanded it instead of getting in front, using his body to block that ball. Last thing you want, and Adam Wainwright is too good of a pitcher. He knows he can win with Rob Johnson or anybody calling back there. But the last thing you want is Mike McKinney thinking that. He can't give Molina a day off and the Cardinals can recover. Runner at second base, Cozart. One ball, one strike on Hannigan with one out. You'd love to know what how Adam Wright, Wainwright thought about his warm-up. A lot of times I've seen guys come out of the bullpen thinking, oh, I've got no hit stuff and have this kind of nightmare. Not see saying that's the way too. Too. Yeah, see it the other way too, where you just know that, boy, I need some help tonight. Two and two. Remember Homer Bailey has a 6.9 ERA in this ballpark is winless. And of the game starts that his team has made or he's made for his team. They have not won any. You're talking about seven starts. A two two. Little tapper. And Freeze makes the play. And Homer Bailey, the ninth man in the lineup, will bat here at the top of the first. Bailey, a 133 hitter. Six. No home runs, no RBIs. Six for 45. Two ground balls to start this ball game that found holes. Then a walk to Votto. Bruce on a 1 2 pitch, a single. That scored two. Then with Ludwig up, we saw a wild pitch, also a double. That was an RBI. Frazier, the ground out. Cozart, the infield hit. Hannigan, the ground out. And now Homer Bailey. 
So five hits in the inning, a wild pitch, and a walk. One two. Pittsburgh has jumped out to a two run lead over Milwaukee that's in the top of the fifth two to nothing. Cardinals will go into Pittsburgh with the lead in the Central Division. Two and a half, two are half of the game lead. And the count runs full here on the pitcher. Wainwright is not sharp here in the first. Give the Reds some credit too. They came out awfully aggressive early in counts against Wayne right here in the first inning. Well, you kind of felt like they after what had happened the last two games. You know, they were in a, a fog yesterday. Kind of figured they're a good ball club. They're going to find their way out, but also expected Adam Wainwright to be Adam Wainwright. But there's a long time in this ball game for the Cardinals to recover. But Adam is going to have to get some outs quickly. 31 pitches. A 3 2. First time in Adam Wainwright's career that he's given up five runs in the first inning. Bailey getting pretty good hacks here too. Three and two. Now you mentioned that uh, what you would have done with this lineup, if anything, it's Dusty Baker's way of saying, okay, we're going to put more pressure on Bottle, maybe to expand that zone and drive in runs. You can look at it that way too. Sure. But he walked. But that was part, and he came around to score, so you can't blame him. Wow. Six to nothing, Cincinnati. Homer Bailey, first RBI of the year for Bailey. Okay. The bullpen has been good for the Cardinals, but no one imagined that they'd have to get somebody up and throwing potentially here in the first inning. You know, Dan, I remember having a game in the minor leagues where start of the game and. He scored a couple runs off me, had two outs. Pitcher came up with the bases loaded, and I gave up the first grand slam and the only grand slam I gave up professionally. And it was to the pitcher. Finally got out of the inning. Fred Koenig, the manager, said, Well, he threw about 40 pitches. You got about 60 more to go. Go get as many outs as you can. Six earned runs this inning, allowed by Wainwright the most of any inning. In his outstanding career.
Cincinnati off of Adam Wainwright first inning. Let's meet your Cardinal lineup tonight. Carpenter Jay and Holiday. Then Craig Beltron Freeze. Johnson, Descalso, Wainwright. The defense for Cincinnati. Ludwig, Chu, and Bruce. Left side of the infield is Frazier and Cozart. Phillips and Bono on the right side. Hannigan is behind the plate. And Homer Bailey getting the start tonight for Cincinnati. So two games under 500, 371 ERA. They think he'll get to the 200 strikeout mark. But the whole thing about Homer Bailey in 15 games against the Cardinals, the Reds are 3 and 12. Homer is 3 and 9. Seven games here at Bush Stadium. The Reds are 0 and 7. Homer is 0 and 5 in those starts with a 6.9 ERA. Giving up a lot of home runs. He's given up four home runs to the Cardinals this year. He's given up at least one home run in his last four starts. Living up to his namesake. Mr. Homer. Marty Brenneman told me he said on the radio describing Homer Bailey. He called him a 500 pitcher with two no hitters. Well, that sounds like Homer Bailey. Homer Bailey to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, I think it was just reality what he was saying. Say if he can get to the fifth or sixth inning and all of a sudden. Sees that he's having a good game, he can turn it up a notch. He'll actually throw harder later on in the game, but you can't get to him early. And Carpenter pulls it foul. Matt Carpenter has now scored 100 runs this season, and that's the first Cardinal second baseman to score 100 runs in a year since 1957. Rogers Hornsby did it four times. Red did it a couple of times, and now Matt Carpenter has done that. That pitch is taken high and inside. It's sharply too short, taken there by Cozart. One away. Michael Walker was getting loose of the pin towards the end of that top of the first inning. He has sat down, and the Cardinals hoping that Wainwright certainly can regroup and give them some innings here tonight. Uh, we would expect, as you take a look at the last year's number one draft pick, Michael Walker, out of Texas A&M. You've got to ask Wainwright to regroup as you get a look at John Jay and you know realize you're down by six, but a very uh, high importance is to save your bullpen. The time like this, you do have the off day tomorrow, but a big series coming up with Pittsburgh. And there's reminds me of a game where Bob Gibson was on the mound and he was facing the Giants, and it wasn't his day, and he's given up line drive after line drive. He looks into the dugout to Red, and Red won't make eye contact with him. Next batter hits another line drive someplace. Another line drive, home run, whatever it is, looks into Red, and Red goes gets a drink of water. Throws a couple more batters, a couple more line drives. Finally, Red goes out there, half scared to death to take the ball away from Gibby. And Gibby says, Where have you been? Have you been watching this? <laughs> That just sometimes you know you you have it sometimes you don't. But you know, we had that shot of Wainwright laying on his back and the hat pulled down. It was during the pregame show. It looked like just kind of gathering his thoughts as there's a line out to short. And you just wonder if you know, physically if he was trying to get loose, stretch out because he was late coming in from. Uh, you know, warming up out in the bullpen, and I'm just this is pure speculation at this point. That's that may tell me, and I think that's part of his pregame ritual where he's visualizing a lot of things and what he wants to transpire and how he wants to do it, and just get his mind straight. 
but the fact that he warmed up so late maybe of an indication that's my they point. just did not feel it down the bullpen just wanted to keep on throwing some more because you know Wainwright warms up unlike anybody else and when he throws his eight tosses between innings you know he just kind of lobs those in there unlike any pitcher I've ever seen so he may not have felt it tonight but the competitor he is he's going to give you everything he's got. Two and oh on Matt Holiday. Wainwright is closing in on 200 starts in his major league career. He's around that 180 mark. And he's never allowed six runs in the first inning before, nor six runs in any inning. There's Phillips. And the Cardinals go one, two, three. So Wayno back to the mound when we come back. It's all Cincinnati early on. By Cooper Tires. Stay in your seat after the game. A spectacular fireworks show. Set to music and shot from the roof of the stadium. Arrive early for a Bud Bash in the Ford Plaza. They'll have music and an autograph session. Get more information and your tickets. Cardinals.com slash promotions. That'll be the next home game that we have. The 6th, the 7th, and the 8th. Cardinals take on Pittsburgh. And the first pitch is hit into shallow right. That's the kind of night it's been. Phillips makes the wide turn. Oh, Johnson hustling down the line to back up the play, and they would have had him at first base. Exactly right. Good hustle by Rob Johnson. He got down there knowing that everybody was going out to the Bermuda Triangle in right field, just fell in between first base, second, and right fielder converging on that ball. And Matt Carpenter, you can't blame him for just turning around and fire it to second. But if he would have thrown back behind, Phillips with a big turn at first base they would have had Phillips out at first. There you see what we're talking about. The tails away to Joey Votto. When I saw that uh, Phillips was moved to the top or rather the uh, second spot top spot by Chu I was thinking they're putting. Some pressure squarely on the shoulders of Joey Votto to drive in some runs. Uh, there's some connect with the Reds say that Joey's more concerned about having that high, high on base percentage. We mentioned it was 431 coming in, add to it with a walk, more so than driving in runs. He's only driven in 61. And they're paying for a lot more than that. 2 0, it's now 2 and 1. I don't remember him taking so many strikes either. Usually if he gets a strike late early middle of the count it doesn't matter exactly he's hammering away. It's 
swing and misses too. You know, he usually makes contact, rarely fouls the ball off. Motto mentioned 0 for 6 in this series, but in the 13 games against St. Louis this year, he's batting 356. Home run and 60 RBIs, 12, 13 walks now. Two count. Runner goes and it's taken for a ball. This may get Waka back up and start throwing. You also think about it too, Mike Matheny. You're coming off a start in which Wainwright threw 128 pitches. You get him out of the game now and it's not many pitches thrown. He's at 42 right now. Waka could serve as your long man, so to speak. And hopefully one or the other can save your bullpen. One question I got is are you willing to you know not you could pitch Michael Walker. It doesn't mean he has to go like a long man. Are you willing to lose him for three or four days? Good point. Now you did just uh, recall Michael Blazik. He might be able to give you an inning or two. But we may be getting ahead of ourselves and Adam could give you four or five maybe six innings. And you just don't want him to struggle every inning. Because that's what takes a lot of uh, you talk about a guy struggling every inning. You know, that's where those pitches bound up and they're they affect you physically twice as much. In the air. Out to deep right center field, and this ball is gone. A three run homer, Jay Bruce. Bruce already two innings and five RBIs. My goodness. Nine to nothing, Cincinnati. And they're on the phone to make sure and see if Waka is ready. No sense. Leaving Adam out there is just obviously it's not his night. And there's that cutter and just staying belt high. A lot of his pitches just cannot locate them on the corners. Everything pretty much in the middle of the plate. I watched Beltron, he just turned around. Line shot into right center. The catch made. Ludwig, who has a double tonight, now one for two. That's out number one. So the question becomes you're down nine runs Al. How long do you stay with right. Wainwright and as you said clearly doesn't have his good stuff and he's laboring laboring being yeah. the, the real key the point. real key. You know you always talk about you know Mike Matheny and Derek Lewis talk about watching a pitcher and he's just breezing through innings. You know you let him go but when they're laboring and I would say this is laboring with eight hits allowed a pair of walks. He's now at 200 innings on the season. Not the way he wanted to get to 200 innings. If you're wondering his shortest career outing, two and two thirds. 0 and 2 on Todd Frazier. He did that twice, and I think one of them was last year, the first start of the year against the Cubs. Probably be at one of the ones. Remember, he really got roughed up. It's the home opener. Yep. So two down, and it brings in Zach Cozart. Strike to Cozart. That an infield hit. Remember, he, he came up. Runner at third. Infield was in. 
Hard hit ball to Craig. Hesitated just a bit, and in doing so, Cozart with his speed raced to the bag at first. And I don't know about you, but say he strikes out Cozart here, gets out of this inning. I don't see any reason why to send him back out there. I'm with you. And you've gotten Waka up for the second time. We'll find out shortly. Back to back K's to end the inning. But a three run shot by Jay Bruce. Is back, and you can tune in live to foxsports.com slash fantasy draft tomorrow night to see who the Midwest girls select. It'll be hosted by Patrick O'Neill and fantasy expert Ryan Fowler. Draft kicks off tomorrow at 8, streaming live on foxsports.com slash fantasy draft. Looks like that'll be it for Wainwright. He went down into the tunnel after a long visit with Mike Matheny and Derek Lilliquist. And here's Alan Craig, home half of the second, and strike one. My understanding is Mike Kelling and Tom Mee, our producer and director, are going to get together at a local restaurant when we get to Pittsburgh tomorrow night that has Wi Fi to tune into that fantasy draft tomorrow with the Fox Sports Midwest girls. I've never seen two veteran you know, truck guys that have been so fascinated by the Fox girls and everything that they do. Fantasy draft. Fantasy draft. This makes it all the better. Here's an 0-2 pitch, and Craig strikes out. First strikeout for Homer Bailey. The Cardinals are, are basically are getting a two for one with Molina being out of the game off day tomorrow. Might be able to do that here with Carlos Beltran. Have him have. And at bat, and maybe take him out of the game. You're down by nine runs. And I know it's early, and we've seen some great comebacks. <laughs> oh, know, have but, we? But but you know what? I've seen. I remember a game when playing for Whitey Herzog against Milwaukee when they were in the American League. And Beltron hits it out to right field. And it was a very similar game to this, where Milwaukee jumped on. The Royals starter and Whitey took out everybody. He took out every regular. He said, Guys, I'm not mad at you, this and that and that, but I want you to leave the ballpark right now, go to dinner, go have a good time, do whatever you want to do, but we'll see you tomorrow. We'll come back and play. Then he took all the bench players, and there was a young Willie Wilson at that time. Willie ended up having a home run inside the park and a home run that hit out of the park. And all those guys were excited to get a chance to play and mounted a comeback. We came back and won that ball game. And I think it was the best thing that he could do for the club. Just 
got the regulars out of there, got them away, got a little bonus uh, day off, and and the other guys were thrilled to death to get playing time, and all of a sudden, you know, they started mounting the comeback, had enough time to to do it over the course of seven eight innings. One one pitch here to David Freeze. Colton Wong, a chance for him to maybe get some playing time here. Shane Robinson. You know, it's also, like you say, it's a, a day where Molina doesn't even have to think that he's going to hit, probably have a late pinch hitting assignment. A strikeout of Freeze, and it's 9 to nothing Cincinnati after two innings of play. Rick Ann Keel, Shelby Miller, Wainwright, Worrell, which Cardinals pitcher has had the best rookie season here in recent memory. We gave you those four choices. Can't go wrong with really any one of them. Let's see. Rick Ann Keel has the rookie strikeout record with 194. Todd Worrell, his rookie year was National League Rookie of the Year with, I believe, 36 saves. And you had uh, Adam Wainwright, remember, he closed out. Closed out the World Series. There you get a better idea. Shelby Miller's 12 wins already. And he's going to be up there in win total and keep that A Ray under three. So, four pretty good choices. Chevy called to the pen. Michael Walkup. And the first pitch is hit to third, taken there by Freeze. What a way. They get to extend out potentially. Michael Walker in this ball game tonight. Quick worker. So many positives with him and this young Cardinal staff. Well, Dan, you know, this is an opportunity, like you say. You know, there's still going to be some starts that are going to be available the rest of the way. So it's kind of an audition. But the same token is. You know, I think he can be such a weapon that you don't want to really waste him in this effort where you would say the likelihood of coming back from nine to nothing is pretty remote. So don't want to lose him for too many days. You know, part of the equation here is Waka going now where September 3rd, when that uh, date pops up, that's a date that you're not really sure what direction the Cardinals may go with uh, a pitcher. And maybe it's Walker here. You extend him out, put him a part of the rotation down the stretch. I talked to John Mosellock over the weekend about Walker. 
And why not walk him making the start that Tyler Lyons did the other day. There's a strike out on the outside corner of Homer Bailey. And according to Mo, he said, I have banked the innings. So if they wanted to put him, meaning Derek Lilliquist and Mike Matheny, into the starting rotation, they certainly could. So there is not going to be a leash, so to speak, on Michael Walker at this point. And I think, you know, Mike Matheny, Derek Lilliquist are still getting to know him and as a pitcher, what he can do, his strengths, his weaknesses. There are still areas for him to mature. But this is also a great opportunity for him to go out there and basically do what Joe Kelly did that and how he earned his spot in the rotation. His pitching in games like this, shutting down the opposition for five innings. Going to the count here on Shin Su Chu. Third inning, and you're already making your third at bat. Damage has been done by Jay Bruce, most notably with the five RBIs. Bases loaded single in the first and a three run homer in the second. Nasty pitch there. Bottom dropped out of it. And a strikeout of two. Two in the inning for Michael Walker. Rest of the major league season in HD quality. Over 350 mobile devices and connected devices carry baseball throughout the season. MLB.tv. Baseball is everywhere. Here's Rob Johnson, followed by Descalso, and then Walk Up. Interesting nugget dug up by Danny Martinez in our truck. The uh, complete games that have seen pitchers since 2010 throw 128 pitches or more in that complete game. Well, their following start, the collective ERA is near five, 4.52. Well, there's only been 15 of those, and that's the first base hit for the Cardinals tonight, and it's off the bat of Johnson. And that broke an 0 for 11 streak for the backup catcher. I will say this too, Al. Now, the 128, it does get your attention. It's a high number, especially with today's day and age of pitch counts. However, 
Wainwright has had a number of starts that have gone well over 100 pitches, and the next time after that, he's been fired. So a lot of times we look a little bit maybe too much into that, but exactly. it is interesting. Yeah. Adam, that last time out was his fifth complete game. That's the most in the National League. It's more than any other uh, team in the Central Division. They all have less than five complete games amongst their staff. Right now you can head to FoxSportsMidwest.com. Stan McNeil was in the Reds clubhouse. When there was an altercation between Brandon Phillips and one of the beat reporters of the Cincinnati Reds. And he writes what went down. Between that uh, beat reporter and Phillips that was in front of his teammates and a number of the members of the Cincinnati and local media here in town. There's video of that as well. But uh, Stan has an article up at FoxSportsMidwest.com. I know where you stand with that. That should stay in the clubhouse. But again, it was done in a manner in which it was out in the open with everybody else to see. And it's only a matter of time before that gets out. And because of the fact everybody's got cell phones or all the uh, amount of cameras that are in a clubhouse now you can understand why players rarely go into the locker room you know they're they've got the lunch room they've got the weight room they've got the trainers room they got the video room all the different places they could hide that pitch was up and hit out to right field catch made by Bruce back to the bag at first goes Rob Johnson and Dan I'm sure Fans would be shocked to know how many times altercations happen between teammates that five minutes later, you know, there's no problem. It's all forgotten. It's, these things just transpire when you travel with each other. But uh, that was a writer and apparently it was over asking Phillips to explain why he's batting second. And it, it got in particular about uh, the questioning of his on base percentage and. You know where he should be situated in the lineup. Here's Michael Walker. And he basically told the guy. Without the colorful words you know go ask the manager. Wainwright tonight the two innings. Eight hits nine runs all earned a pair of walks a pair of strikeouts gave up the home run to Bruce. Through a wild pitch. 53 pitches, 36 were strikes. ERA jumps up to 2.96. It was at 2.58. Chris Davis with a home run tonight for Baltimore. But Bailey makes a nice play out in second. No. He's exchanging. She reached in the glove to take the ball out. So it's an out. Force out at second base. So that the Cardinals don't get the double play. Here Our comes Mike Bethini. And he'll have an argument here. Well, he's going to lose the argument. And we'll see why right now. See him reach in there. I don't he's, know Al. Uh, he reached in. I don't know. This one I'm not so sure. All you have to do is show an effort to go into the glove. And that hand was going in there and lost lost control. It's Dan Bellino. I win. So you reach in there. I don't know. His I hand's still in his glove. I don't know. Ball was out of it too. You're, it doesn't matter. Those are not happy with himself because he muffed a double play ball. We're also witnessing history here. Al is uh, on telecast 1,258, having never made a mistake. That's amazing. That Since run, yesterday. That, that run that you're on. I know what you're saying, and I think at other times in the season, you, you know, particular fly balls, we see the throwing hand go into the glove, and then the drop is made. But that one, not as discernible as others. In my opinion. That would be my opinion, Al. 
your opinion is a little different. I saw it the way the umpire saw it. So we're entitled to opinions. That's the beauty of this game. And I don't always agree with the umpires, but that's something I did agree. Dan Bellino. Mike could question it, but uh, he couldn't change his opinion. Chris Davis, I was mentioning this 47 home runs now, 120 RBIs. Miguel Cabrera, last year's Triple Crown winner in the American League, having a better season this year, but because of Chris Davis. You know that's going to be the tough one for him to get the home run crown. He's got the bang average. He's got the RBIs. Cabrera up the middle, knocked down by Bailey. Carpenter hustling and safe. Base hit for Carpenter. Leads the league in hitting, or I'm, excuse me, in hits. And here he legs out another one. You see him run all the way. Of course, we don't even need, we don't even have to question Hyundai with that replay. And you know, Matt Carpenter is always going to put his head down and dig as hard as he can. And if not for the uh, drop, in which the Cardinals should have at least three on at this point, if not for the blown call, <laughs> could have been a double play. Did I notice you kind of still thinking that was a bad call? I that's more times than not, I agree with the umpires. I really do. But this one I did think it was the wrong call. And that's part of the beauty of, of baseball is the human element. And I could be wrong. Wait a minute. I could be wrong, Dan. Mark this down. Eight. Eleven thirty seven. What's the date? Uh, I don't know. 29th, 28th, 28th. I could be wrong, but in this case, I'm not. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> Taken inside by John Jay. Lined out to short. Pitch in 98 from Bailey. The only reason I say that I think it was wrong is that I thought he dropped it. I really did. I thought it was just a mistake. He dropped the ball, and I know what you're saying. You go in, it's kind of a gray area reaching in to get the ball, but I didn't think he had caught it. So we move on. A 2 1 pitch with two down. It's slicing towards the corner. Now, if the Cardinals lose this game 9 8 out, I'm going to go bananas. And I'm going to say that you and Dan Bellino are best friends. And <laughs> hey, he's maybe he's related to Joe Bellino, the Heisman Trophy winner out of out of the of the Naval Academy it's before you were born, Dan. Yeah. We've had some issues with uh, Dan Bellino this year. We've heard his name a lot. in his third year of Major League Service. Voted to the Major League staff before the 2011 season. 
resides in Illinois with his wife Kathy and three sons. Holds a law degree. An MBA and has passed the bar exam. Once worked for an aide to the Illinois Chief Federal uh, District Court Judge. We had an issue with him in Chicago. Swing and a miss. Strikeout of Jay. Three tonight for Homer Bailey. St. Louis as we move to the fourth inning and Jim Hayes is going to take us back to last night Jim we saw just the power arms the young arms of St. Louis and really it was especially highlighted by Kevin Segris in that seventh inning. Yeah he's been nearly unhittable Dan this season 28 innings just nine hits and two earned runs allowed holding opponents to a batting average of 0 99 last night he struck out on the side in the top of the seventh getting Joey Votto looking to end the inning. Pretty exciting stuff for a rookie you would think but Segrist told me quote I look at it as doing my job. That's what I'm supposed to do. After a little pushing he admitted that getting Votto looking. Gave him quote a little boost of confidence. Kevin Dan is an understated guy and he's become quite a weapon for Mike Matheny. And here is a Brandon Phillips Jim to follow up on that 28 innings two earned runs. 0 99 the batting average against the lefty nearly 13 strikeouts per nine. Has there been any talk about the future of Segrist and another guy that potentially could be a starter before it's all said and done. Well for the time being they're looking at him as a guy out of the bullpen and Mike Matheny said he's not a lefty specialist they could expand his role. He seems to excel in high leverage situations and right now Dan with those kind of numbers are going to ride him. All right Jim we appreciate it. It's Phillips Votto and Bruce. Jim is right. He has been so much fun to watch. I think we've said many times that we can't get enough of him. He's just electric every time he comes in. Enjoyed watching him and hearing comments from other broadcasters like, where'd you get this guy? How did he survive until the 41st round? Talk to the Cardinals personnel. There's two names that they mentioned in the development of the young pitching of the Cardinals. One being Brett Strom, minor league pitching coordinator. Is Phillips strikes out, and the other one is Brian Eversgird. He's in his first season as the pitching coach at Memphis, a couple of years at Springfield. He's been in the Cardinal system for a while. Hilton St. Louis at the ballpark and St. Louis Union Station Hotel, the only hotels that give you home field advantage and an extraordinary Cardinals baseball experience. For reservations and info, call 314 421 1776. You can visit HiltonStLouis.com. I'm glad you mentioned Brian Eversgird because we can remember when he was his playing career, and I think I remember he's from uh, Illinois. 
and hopefully now he'll move up the ladder as things go along but uh, very well can thought of as Brian Everson. The Cardinals have been promoting from within Blaze Hillsley now the bullpen coach number of years in the minor leagues. Right. To me, that's that's good, Al. I mean, yeah. he had 16 years, uh, and no disrespect to Tony and his staff, they did a, a wonderful job. Obviously, they won, but those guys didn't leave, and you have to have some type of motivation, you would think, for some of your minor league guys to say, "Hey, I want to stay with this uh, organization, stick it out, so I can come to the big league level." Yeah, but then you also get in a situation like Mike Matheny's pretty comfortable with his coaching staff now, so he's going to be here for a long time, and. You know, a lot of these coaches are pretty young. Not like you're going to be looking, making changes. It's three walks for Joey Votto tonight. The bacon habanero ranch quarter pounder is topped with white cheddar, thick cut applewood, smoked bacon, tomato, leaf lettuce, and a spicy, cool habanero ranch sauce. All on a bakery style bun. Mouth watering for a reason, and it's only at McDonald's. First walk issued by Waka. Here's Bruce who already has five RBIs. Jay is among the National League leaders at home runs, RBIs, total bases, doubles, extra base hits, and outfield assists. Time is called late, granted, for Jay Bruce. In the last three seasons, Jay Bruce is the only player in the major leagues with at least. 97 doubles and 91 home runs. Seen that very good seeking action. Those pitches there by Waka, and they talk about the downward plane for Michael Waka, big guy, just like Wainwright. Use that to his advantage. Only one in the National League in America. You got Cabrera again. He's at 113 doubles and 117 homers. Strikeout of Bruce, and that time the changeup. Fourth strikeout for Michael Waka. Michael Wilder has a great changeup. Throws high high octane fastball, but it's a changeup. If you get major league hitters to swing at it, then he can be very successful. But when they don't swing at the changeup, he still doesn't really have a major league quality breaking ball. He's got the fastball and got the changeup, but if they can take away the changeup, then they only look fastball. Swing and a miss by Ryan Ludwig. Still got to hit it. By the way, the three walks for Votto as he stands at first base that gives him 105, and he is the only player in the National League with over 100. Well, this is pretty nasty stuff out of the pen here from Michael Waka. That was a breaking ball there that he got Luddy out in front. Reds are nine and seven since Ryan Ludwig came off the disabled list August 12th. And he's starting to get his timing back. Pop fouling out of play. And he's hit in seven of the ten games. Over 310. We saw in that season that he was an all star. He really can carry a club. He was just outstanding that year for St. Louis. Good citizen, too. A guy that you want on your team. Good person. Good teammate. It was fun getting the chance to know him on a daily basis here in town. Absolutely. Very good guy. And one of those guys, too, you pull for after all the injuries that he yep. had. Yeah, absolutely. Again, the bottom dropping out of that pitch from Michael Walker. Strikes out the side.
the Ravens and get ready for football. Rams countdown to kickoff pregame show 630 right here on Fox Sports Midwest. Touchdown extra point was good and they kicked a field goal. Actually the uh, extra point was blocked. Michael Walker got in there with that big wingspan. Forgot about that block. So now you have a nine. I was worried about your math again. Yeah, I was got a little ahead of myself, Al. Yeah, I'm, I'm still into it though. It happens. More often than we want to remember. So the six for the touchdown, the three for the field goal. I got it. Or he had three field goals. There you go. Here's an 0 1 pitch and Holiday hits it to the right side. I know a big Cardinal fan is uh, watching tonight. He loves baseball, but Luke, I know you're watching and it's time for you to go to bed. Mom has called twice between innings. But I love him, Al. He's got to go to school tomorrow. But it's time for bed, Luke. Alec Craig strike out back in the second inning. I was uh, out at Rams Park today took a tour of the facility had a chance to visit with Jeff Fisher. Neat guy who loves. Loves Major League Baseball. He had more questions for did me you? about the Cardinals than I did. About the Rams we're sitting in his office had a chance to visit. He's excited about the upcoming season. Different attitude around there is not completely different. Alan Craig. 13 home runs, 96 RBIs, the 96 second most in the National League. It's it off the bag, a fair ball. And Craig will round the bag at first and stops there. The one out single. That'll pad his batting average as he hits us down the third baseline, hits the bag, and way over the head of Frazier. Are attracted down the shortstop, so Allen couldn't get into Soren's position, holding to a single. His six game hitting streak is in debt. Beltron comes in seventh in the league in average. Yet Craig started to play at fifth, Carpenter sixth, and Yachty was on the bench leading the league. Up the middle, and this could be double play. It is taken by Cozart. Six to three on the double play.
It's Penn a Day presented by Coca-Cola and Pasta House. Kids 15 and younger with a ticket receive a Fred Bird pennant. It's also a Hunter Family Sunday. Fans purchasing individual tickets in select terrace and pavilion locations receive a free Hunter hot dog and Coke. Get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Charter high speed pitch. Take a look at Bailey. He's hit 98. Michael Walker at 97. Third inning of work for Michael Walker. One walk and five strikeouts as he's retired all six men. Plus the walk. I'm going to think about your math too there. <laughs> In the air out to center field. John Jay is there. Interesting to see how long they'll go with Waka here and if indeed that sets up Al to potentially have him make a start on the road trip. Well, we believe the next time they would need the fifth starter will be September 3rd. So if you wanted to extend him out and then put him in the hat for that start on September 3rd along with Carlos Martinez Tyler Lyons. Michael Walker, you know, some of the candidates. And a ground ball off the gloves of Freeze and Descalso. And a base hit for Cozart, his second infield hit of the night. And it was off the gloves. David Freeze plays clo so close to the line at third base. You know, this just beyond his reach. Going to his left, just off his glove. You see there it deflected it and a little bit behind as Descalzo got his glove on it, but it couldn't hold on to it. It was deflected behind him. Here's Ann again with one out and a runner at first base. Nine to nothing, Cincinnati. If you're just joining us, Adam Wainwright, shortest outing of uh, his season. Six runs he allowed in the first and then three in the second. Jay Bruce with five RBIs tonight. Let me ask you this, Al. What about the fact that Michael Walker comes to the ballpark right now and as a rookie and a young guy getting his first taste of major league action, he's in the bullpen. The juices are flowing. Where as opposed to if you get a start, you're thinking about that start four or five days in advance. That he potentially may have, and just how that plays into the the mental side of this game with a young pitcher. Well, you know me. I, I prefer to see a young guy come and pitch out of the bullpen that first year. A manager can kind of protect you. He can put you in certain spots where you can succeed. A lot of guys coming from the minors. It's popped up, and the catch is made by Carpenter. Happens with a lot of guys that come from the minors and they make those starts. You know, they've only been throwing five, maybe six innings down in the minor leagues. Well, with the pressure of the major leagues, you can usually almost cut off at least one inning. So many times, the only thing they can wish for, they can't wish for a win. They can only, you know, hope for uh, no decision because they don't go deep enough into a game. And I also will tell you this, Dan. I think a lot of the young guys that when they're in the rotation. Because of they have that four or five days of preparation, they worry themselves to death. That's my point. Yeah. And so when you come in here blindly, you just caught by surprise, you just go and pitch. You always have to assume that you might get into a game, and you got to be excited about it every time when you come to the ballpark out of the bullpen. How about Homer Bailey? Base hit into right field. His second hit tonight to go along with an RBI. Two for three. It's an off day tomorrow for the club. And then we head to Pittsburgh tomorrow night. Budweiser, what's on tap? Cards, Pirates will come your way at 5 30. Friday night, Cards and Pirates, another all important series inside the Central Division and a battle for first place. And the Cardinals. That Friday night game have Shelby Miller against Francisco Liriano. Liriano 14 and 6. And Shelby is 12 and 8. And Liriano's pitched two outstanding games against St. Louis. He's really shut down the, the league's best offense.
Rob Johnson and the scouts are going to make sure they get together on what to sign with the runner at second base. I want to assume something. Shin Su Chu. Base hit up the middle. First time up. Scored a run in the first. Grounded out to second and struck out in the third. Waka dealing with runners at first and second. And two outs. Strikeout you mentioned was against Waka. Good was Michael Walker in his major league debut. It was against the Kansas City Royals. Struck out Alex Gordon for his first major league K. That one wound up being the game that we finished at around three in the morning. Right. Five hours, some rain delays. Little tapper up the first base side. Nice play. Play flipped it out of his glove to Michael Walker covering the bag at first. Fans you've known for years at StubHub is a great place to find the seat you want to the Cardinals both home and road. Now they offer fan rewards at StubHub.com. Jim Hayes, the Mad Hungarian, now Roboski, Dan McLaughlin with you as we move to the home half of the fifth. Nine to nothing in favor of the Cincinnati Reds. Cardinals will face Lariano, A.J. Burnett, and Jeff Locke, who has had some issues in the second half all this weekend against Pittsburgh as Homer Bailey deals David Freeze a strike. Meanwhile, it's an off day for Cincinnati. They head to Colorado. They're playing their 20th straight day without an off day. That's the maximum you could play without getting permission from the ball clubs.
Cardinal hitters have pretty good numbers against Bailey, as you would think, with the problems he's had facing St. Louis. They only have three hits tonight in the first four innings, and all three of them are singles. That's taken outside. The Pirates leading their game tonight, seven to one. Marlon Bird, a three-run homer. And John Buck just joined the ball club from the Mets and already making his presence be known. And free strikes out. That's how we start the home half of the fifth. By the way, I, I tweeted out Al that the Cardinals would face those three, and uh, our astute fans let me know that uh, Jeff Locke demoted. Locke, and sure enough, he has been. Comes in the wake of uh, his third short start, five runs, eight hits against the Brewers on Tuesday night. So he'll go to Double A, and they're saying it gives him a short break. And he was scheduled to go Sunday. Cardinals do not have a pitcher listed for Sunday, but because of the short outing with Wainwright, they could bring him back if he wanted. If they wanted to. Only through 53 pitches. Trying to see, do you want Wainwright to pitch against Pittsburgh or do you want him to pitch against Cincinnati his next time out? You can mix in the extra day's rest if you wanted to. There's some combinations that you can mix with that. And we're assuming that. Everything is okay with Adam Wayne Wainwright just a off night just couldn't. Get it together. And nothing uh, physically wrong with him. Two and two and Johnson who got things started for the Cardinals offensively with their first base hit back in the third. Broke that 0 for 11. This is his sixth start and appearing in his 17th game since his recall. You have to keep a batting eye when you're backing up an Iron Man like Molina. A 2 2. Strikeout. From America's number one to pregame show comes the all new Fox Football Daily, featuring an all star lineup of experts and NFL legends. Get everything you love on Sunday, every day of the week. Fox Football Daily, weeknights at 5 on America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1. It's five strikeouts. For Homer Bailey. Johnson is one for two, and now it's Daniel Descalso. A disappointing night thus far. The Cardinals trailing nine to nothing. Young lady in the uh, section below us that is fired up. She is going to get these Cardinals in gear, Al. That's right. Cardinal fans can do something to inspire them. 
Ball behind nine nothing. You, they need a lift. She stood up, screamed at the team, and then hit her boyfriend. She's got to take her frustrations out on somebody, I guess. I'll send you down there. So she beat on me? Absolutely. Oh, I got it. You want you want your second shot of going solo again? <laughs> <laughs> What a glorious day in my life that was. I uh, know. <laughs> and a ground ball hit to the right side. Taken by Votto. Race to the bag. And Bailey is there. Beats Descalso and the Cardinals go one, two, three. Nine to nothing. Cincinnati. Cardinals.com slash promotions. The Pirates will be in town that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You'll have fireworks, the Willie McGee, uh, Willie McGee jersey giveaway, and a pennant giveaway on that Sunday. And that's coming up when we come back home to face the Pittsburgh Pirates. Lots of changes for the Cardinals who trail 9 nothing. And then we've got our March 15th uh, 10 a.m. B squad out there now behind Michael Walker. How about Cosma in left field? Cosma's in left field. John Jay in center. Shane Robinson in right field. Matt Adams at first base. Colton Wong at second. Descalzo's the shortstop. Freeze. He must. They must be mad at him. He's still in the game. Of course, he ran <laughs> out of. So David's at third, and Rob Johnson. The only one we have it on the bench, we aren't going to use. That's Molina. Why not? And it is Phillips here. Brandon Phillips, two hits, two runs scored, and a strikeout. As Waka is pitching in. His fourth inning of work here tonight in relief of Adam Wainwright, who lasted two innings and gave up nine runs. Walk has walked one. He struck out five. He's allowed just two hits and no runs. Thrown 44 pitches and is three innings plus. One and two. What Michael Walker has shown his outstanding change up here tonight to go along with a mid to high 90s fastball. Curveball at times has been a little bit sharper than we've seen. Yeah, and it's it's a pitch that's gonna come for him. And I wouldn't be surprised if you 
ask him if he's not working on the sidelines a little bit with a cutter. Shelby Miller has added that to his arsenal now. What caught Johnson stays three and two. So Pete Cosma is playing left field and in the lineup batting cleanup. So it's definitely been an odd night. We'll, we'll check on that because it looks like on the scoreboard they have Robinson batting fourth and Cosma fifth. And then the announcement had yeah, those two. I, and I heard the announcement too, so that's why I said we'll have to wait and see. That's another reason that you should stay tuned. <laughs> Primary reason. Another check swing. That was good. <laughs> Just making sure you're on your toes, Matt Hungarian. I'm looking forward to see the guys out there. I'm relaxed. Put them out there and have some fun. And there's a strikeout of Phillips. Six strikeout for Walker. He's having fun. He's got Brandon Phillips twice. Not even close. Well, this is the game of baseball, isn't it? You're going to have nights like this. Cardinals many times on the other side. And just a rough start from Adam Wainwright. Hopefully just a little blip on uh, the radar for him. And move forward to his next start. But you get all the guys that are coming off the bench getting out to play. They're excited. They got an opportunity to go out and show the fans, show the management there what they can do. Show all the scouts in the stands. You're always additioning in this game for your own people, for yourself, and for a future employer. Yeah, I did talk to Cosma at one point about playing the outfield. He has done that in the minor leagues. And he's turned around here on this play, and it's off the base of the wall. Votto on his way to second base and on base for the fourth time tonight. Three walks and a double. What'd you say about him playing the outfield? Played that perfectly off the base of the wall. He did that. And he did part. get turned around a couple of times. <laughs> Looked like he broke in, then he did a. 360, but as you said, ball over his head right at the base of the wall. He was in position for the perfect, perfect carom. Gets it back in quickly. And you know, he's a good enough athlete that it shouldn't be no problem for him to go from the infield to the outfield. That's not the problem. It's the problem going, being an outfielder going to the middle infield like. Uh, Skip Schumacher did make that kind of conversion, but for an infielder to go to the outfield, it's not a big deal. Not in September yet, so you wonder if Mike Matheny would give a position player an inning. Well, the problem is, is Rob Johnson's his best relief pitcher. He's got the lowest ERA on the staff, zero. But he kind of, I guess, Mike would have to activate himself to catch. Rob Johnson because you aren't going to put Yachty back there. Maybe a chance to see your. See a pitcher go into the field. And have uh, you find out who your emergency catcher is who we think is Descalzo. Descalzo by the way pitched in college. And we know he's got a very good arm. He's got a cannon for an arm. You know Schumacher earlier this year pitched for uh, the Dodgers and was hitting low 90s. And I would assume if you put Yachty on the mound or a Daniel Descalso, guys that do have that plus arm, you would see position players or a catcher hit 90 miles an hour. I mean, that's not far fetched to think that way. Certain guys, not all, just the guys with you, the plus arms. Yeah, but you would never put Yachty out there. No, I'm not saying we yeah. do that. I'm just for conversation. Sure, sake. for conversation's sake. And that's pulled foul. 
you know it's cruel to do to a position player that's pitching. It's after they take the warm up tosses, the crowd's laughing, they're having they got a big smile on their face. Then all of a sudden tell them, remember there's no screen in front of him. And then as soon as they release the ball, they recoil to get into pitch position to field. Just missed. We saw Jose Okendo do that. Some of the best knucklers, by the way, are the infielders. infielders. Yes. Mike Tyson used to have a good one. Okendo in that game he pitched, and it was an anniversary of it recently, I think. He went three plus innings before he got the loss. And that time, Jay Bruce caught looking. Right. Pitch before was awfully close, too. Pretty interesting night for Jay Bruce tonight, isn't it? Bruce, two run single and scored in the first, three run home run in the second, and they're in a pair of strikeouts against Walker. There's Ryan Ludwig, struck out. And is also fly to center in double. Basic is warming up for the Cardinals and pitcher spot is due up first. My bench player you have is Yadier Molina. Right down the middle and a strike to Ludwig. Again, late movement, bottom drops out of that pitch, 86 miles an hour. You can sell it to the to the batter, and he swings at it. You know, and he's really in good shape. There's Michael Blazik just rejoined the ball club as Carlos Martinez was sent down, so he could uh, stay stretched out, pitching in the rotation for Memphis. Ball that's hit to second. How about the work done tonight by Michael Walker?
best rookie season. 194 strikeouts for Ricky Ankeel. That's the all time rookie record. He wins the vote 36 percent. Nine to nothing Cincinnati. I've said it a million times. I would uh, if I was GM of any baseball team out there at least make the inquiry place the call to Scott Boris or whomever is representing Ricky and Keel or call Rick himself and say if you have any inkling of getting back on the mound you've got a home with us you can try to work yourself back wherever you want to go but we'll work with you you could trick somebody for another three or four more years but apparently when he was let go this year from the Astros and then the Mets that question was asked of him and he said no I'm not going back to the mound. I know the Cardinals would along with many teams say hey if you want to give it a shot we'd be happy to help out. Remarkable story of Ricky and Keel. Michael Walker being stretched out in this game. Inside to walk up. Homer Bailey cruising along in this game. The Cardinals have been out hit 11 5. Everybody says you got a big lead, you know, just throw strikes, throw, throw your fastball. Well, you got to still pitch. You can't just throw the ball over the plate. Call it a strike. Only a swing on that. Wow. Well, you know, it is kind of late. Wow. Mike Everett got dinner plans or something. By the way, Walker, the first Cardinal reliever with seven strikeouts since 1994. Brian Eversgird. Ken Daly did it back in 1986. There's Colton Long. Gertie's getting a lot of ink today, right? Mentions. And it's ball one to Colton Long, first plate appearance of the night. Jason Worth has hit his 20th of the year. And Washington has tied up their game. A lot of people think that uh, Washington is going to make a push before the season's over and make their presence felt in the wild card. Edinson Volquez, who was just recently released by San Diego, will sign with the Dodgers. Side, both left and right guys make it a little uncomfortable in that batter's box. It's a big part of pitching. Pirates do win seven to one over Milwaukee. So the Cardinals have a one run or one run, but one. Let me try to say it. One game lead over Pittsburgh currently. Either way, they'll go into Pittsburgh still leading the National League Central. Phillips retires Colton Long. There's two outs. John Jay has been part of that uh, six is a serious number. Al, when did uh, walk up songs become 
part of the game of baseball. These guys are asked all the time about their own personal walk up music to the plate. Well, I remember it in the 70s, but I don't remember them asking, you know, what's your favorite song? And some guys started doing it, but uh, he played Hungarian Rhapsody number three for me. Little queen action, huh? Hungarian, it's a joke, Al. Bohemian, I get it, okay? I'm trying to play along here with you. Come on, Al. And it's nothing to nothing. There's no time for joking on a game like this. It's like when we had uh, a few years ago, a gentleman was in the booth. Meatloaf. I said, you know, Mr. Meat, or should I call you Loaf? I said, if the Cardinals win this, two out of three ain't bad. And he just went right over his head, like it's going over yours right now. It's one of his favorite tunes, Al. And that did go over my head. And well, it's okay for you, but he's the one that sang this thing yeah, right. about a million times. He's a big baseball fan. There's a base hit into right center. And Jay is back to the bag at first. Anyway, he started giving me uh, all the reasons why two out of three ain't bad <laughs> between the white lines. I didn't want to hear about that. See a little hump in that pitch as John Jay picks up his first hit of the night. One for three brings up Matt Adams. And Robinson is batting cleanup. He's behind Matt. What would be your walk up song now, Al? Oh. There's something that stands out, tickles your fancy. Maybe some Barry Manilow. No, maybe Tiny Tim. Barbara Streisand. Fit your personality. Little bet Miller. No, no, Tiny Tim. You don't even know who Tiny Tim is. <laughs> of course I know who Tiny Tim is. Tiptoe through the tulips. That's what I'd be playing my song. He was a weird dude. <laughs> Some of those late night appearances he had. I hate to tell you this, but I saw him in concert. Oh, come on. He was a leading act. Or Lynn Campbell and, and Santana. But oh, why couldn't we have just a night <laughs> <eight> game? <laughs> if, you <laughs> if you start telling me about you and Tiny Tim. That's it. I'm out of here. Here's the kicker. My first marriage. <laughs> Got married the same day. <laughs> Why would you know that? Because. That <laughs> That spouse <laughs> went up and told him. <laughs> that was the climax of that, <laughs> of that wedding <laughs> and that uh, marriage. What did he talk about? <laughs> yeah, three two pitch. <laughs> you go ahead, Colin. <laughs> oh. All four.
take away the first two innings, we'd have a pretty good pitcher's duel going. <laughs> Similar numbers. Michael Walker has really represented himself very well. Brian Price out to talk to his starter. Homer Bailey has not lived up to his name yet. This ball game, but Cardinal cleanup hitter Shane Robinson will get a shot. He stuck around to see where Shane was going to hit. And he is in the fourth spot in this lineup. Having a good month of August, hit 375. Over 350 against right handed pitching this year. And you can take your finger off the mute button. <laughs> I can't look at you right now. Oh. One and two. and hanging to popped up shallow center Phillips there it's nine nothing.
Caesar, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Well, that's it for Michael Walker. And recently recalled, Michael Blazik will take over. Cardinals have been very impressed with his fastball, very hard slider. And it's our Chevy call to the pin. Good work by Waka with the scoreless innings that he put together. It's our Chevy call to the pin, and it's Michael Blazik. So, 11 time coming out of the bullpen for Blazik. He has faced the Reds previously. And not all the hitters, but Todd Frazier, the first one, faced him and he walked him. Stay focused, people. Stay focused. It's directed at yourself. Here's Hanahan. I just saw him where Johnny Football was suspended for the first half of the season. First half, uh, first half of the first game. Oh, wow. That's punishment. We're taking on uh, the juggernaut Rice. Oh, and to the count. One ball and two strikes on Hanahan. Saw that uh, Yeshua Puig was benched in his game by Don Mattingly today, the uh, young rookie phenom from Cuba. You would think it'd be he and Jose Fernandez, both Cuban defectors, that would have a chance to win the NL Rookie of the Year award. Mattingly upset with some of the efforts recently by. Week is Pete Cosma. That's right. Pete Cosman left puts it away for the out. Let's turn to our Nissan drive of the game. Jay Bruce. I have a couple of choices here, but that's his three run shot. Five RBIs on the night for Bruce. Two for two. Two runs scored. Five RBIs. In his first two plate appearances. The next two, he struck out both times. And that's been building with Mattingly and Puig and most people applaud Don Mattingly for doing what he did. It's in foul territory. Adams is over and makes the play. And Adams a big man but he is very mobile. A lot more athleticism than some people may believe. He made a sensational play the other night. Diving and stopping a ball at the uh, right over the foul line behind first base and it was a key play in the Cardinal victory. 65 pitches tonight for Waka. 45 were strikes, so four innings, three hits, and he strikes out seven. Pretty impressive. So you can also that's what you can do with the rookies. You can make sure it's a very positive outing. Get him out there before maybe he gets a little tired out, but. A good workout for Walker and leaves a very, very fine impression. Here's an 0 1 pitch. Sad news tonight. Frank Pulley, the uh, former umpire that was very, very good, passed away. That's a shame. I really knew Frank uh, many years, really respected him. Used to go down. A lot of us used to be involved with a charity down in Springfield, and Frank and Richie Garcia. Two umpires were instrumental in getting an awful lot of charity items for that event that helped out Special Olympics. And Frank Pulley was an outstanding guy. 
great umpire and really a better person. Hit to the left side and taken there. Over to Adams. Time to stretch. The nine run lead for Cincinnati. West is brought to you by Schnucks, your neighborhood hometown grocer. Graham and Mike Basile join Cardinal Baseball tonight here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, and uh, it's nine to nothing in favor of the Cincinnati Reds. As Homer Bailey is cruising along. Tony Dam, the the bench players are just about ready to break loose on him. Osmond's going to break that 0 for 23 slump that he's in. And here is the left fielder now, Pete Cosma. A final Pittsburgh over Milwaukee by the score of 7 to 1. Orzolani takes the loss. Charlie Morton picks up the win. That pitch taken in the dirt. So Pittsburgh, as we speak, one game out before the night is through. Could be a half game. I believe the Pirates do play tomorrow, so we could be uh, tied heading into Friday night. Four game series with Milwaukee. Either way, even or half game behind or even. And I wouldn't assume this game is over, Dan. You know, you got to be careful thinking that way. Never have I, have I gone down that road, Al. Even though the Cardinals are down by nine. Three we saw the, the great comeback in Cincinnati. Led Absolutely. By the home run. Mabry had the big home run in that one. And Where's were, Danny Graves when we need him? If you're wondering until well, I'd say the over under was probably taken at for us the eighth inning till we would mention Danny Graves or John Mabry and you had the under you win. Thank you. Pete O for his last 23 needs to needs to break out here. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. He would take anything at this point. Blue anything. Well, usually, a slump buster usually is a, a flare, or a quail, a bleeder.
And a check swing. Strikeout for Bailey, number seven. David Freeze has had a tough time figuring out Homer as he's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. See, like right there, that's a good slump buster. It's a good slump buster. <laughs> Nothing like a good slump buster. Hands pulls him in inside optic and a little flare just falls in. So David Freeze is well on his way to a long hitting streak. Maybe a rival the one that he had what 20 games earlier this year. That was back That's in right. mid May to almost mid uh, June when David had that 20 game hitting streak. Longest by the Cardinals this season. Ricky Nolasco picked up 11 strikeouts, ties the season high, and he's six and one since joining the Dodgers. One pitch, ground ball off the bat of Johnson and a double play. Four six three, the double play. Nine to nothing as we head to the eighth here in Game Three of this series. Go to our studio and a Bomberito sports update. All right, thank you. It's the second inning of work here for Blazik. The Cardinals trailing by the score up nine to nothing. Homer Bailey has had a good night at the plate. On the mound, couple of hits tonight, and the first pitch is taken for a strike. Plato's had two hits last night. Bailey, two hits tonight. Well, 
Blazek in his second inning of work. Got a really nasty curveball. There it was there, but yep. take it just a bit low. It's 167 average on the year, even with the two hits tonight. And a ground ball slowly hit towards second. One away. Dusty Baker, six years now in Cincinnati. If they don't uh, start winning games and doing what they're doing here tonight, you never know. Arizona, Washington, and if they get hot, they control their own destiny too with playing St. Louis as much as they do. And Pittsburgh as well. They have six of the last nine games are between the Reds and Pirates. Along with Marty Brenneman, he thinks they're going to catch the Pirates. I hope he mean, uh, assumes that the Cardinals are going to win the Central Division. And I'm talking with Mike Matheny and the coaching staff. And I'm sure the players feel the same way that when they went into Pittsburgh and played that five game series. They felt like. Pirates didn't see anywhere near as good a ball club as they are, and they're really looking forward to that next matchup. They won won the series when they played here. Well, you think about the matchups on paper at least, and you get a little concerned with Liriano, just how good he's been against St. Louis, home and road. The funny thing is, is you know, before both these starts, Liriano's had a rough one. And then the Cardinals come in town and he gets uh, the ship righted again. Let's see if that plays pans out. Two and one on Phillips. Here's a two one pitch. That's taken high. Three and one. Up and out of play. That'll find the seats. And we encourage fans to get their seats now for the big game, uh, big series, and the big games against Pittsburgh. Sixth, seventh, and eighth. Cardinals have a weekend set when we get back with Pittsburgh. That was thrown behind Blasek. Phillips hits it in the air. Center field. Jay with the catch. This tourist will pinch it here, and this will be his 1300th appearance, but it looks like we're going to have a pitching change. Salas. Recalled a couple days ago. Looks like he'll have his first appearance.
for the 20th time. 0 and 2 is record. Couple holds. 4.79 ERA. 16 strikeouts, five walks, the whip. Salas, his last appearance was at Iowa. That was on August 25th. Got a no decision, pitched one inning, and he had a pair of strikeouts. He was recalled from Memphis yesterday. And as Torres hits a fly ball into right field, Salas comes in, one pitch, gets the out, nine to nothing in favor of the Reds. Authority of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. All Reds and Homer Bailey tonight. Isturis is in at third. Heisey's in right. Hanahan at first. Swing and a miss by Descalso. He's flied out and also grounded out. Now he's held the Cardinals to five hits tonight. He's had a couple double plays behind him. All five hits have been singles. The Cardinals have had a streak of 18 straight games with at least a double. That's in jeopardy here tonight. Hit 69 doubles this month. Tied for fourth in team history with doubles in August. Back in 2001, they had 69. You get one more, they tie 1936 with 70. See the split of the fork ball when you really jam it back there, you really can't throw it very hard. And you see the good downward action. 
on the split finger fastballs. They're more out on the fingertips, and you can still throw that with pretty good velocity. That will stay foul. Dan, how about Soriano? In his last 50 games, Soriano has 20 home runs and 53 RBIs. Deal looks pretty good right now, doesn't it? Wow. Especially if they get into the playoffs and they have an outside shot to do that. They're starting to get their starting pitching back. A lot of people think they will be a wild card winner. Very tough to qualify for the playoffs, but outside shot. Apparently both managers in New York will be back next season. Joe Girardi, no surprise there. Terry Collins as well with the Mets. Get the terrible news out of flushing with Matt Harvey dealing with an elbow injury. You're just not sure the full extent of that when he'll be back. That's a leadoff walk for Daniel Descalso. Second walk. Well, the pitch count at 112, so I'll ask you this, Al. Why would Dusty Baker keep Homer Bailey in this game? No reason to. You know, you don't get starting pitchers don't get paid for complete games anymore. They're not conditioned to throw that high number of uh, innings pitch or pitch. And you know how I feel about pitch counts, but. Dusty does have Hoover up. There really is no reason to go much further in here other than trying to get the shutout, but yeah, he's, he's in the gonna, eighth inning. Right, right he's so, not going to go nine. Right. And when I do believe when you're having a game like this, though, that the last thing you want to do is bring him out in the middle of an inning. So you're hoping he can. Get three quick outs. He's got Fernando Salas in the batter's box now. Maybe he just finishes off Salas and then uh, goes to his pen. 0 2. Fernando was so good in 2011 for Tony La Russa in that club. Remember, Jason Mott wasn't even the closer till the second half and couldn't even call him that. Later than that, but Salas led that ball club with 24 saves, and without the work that he did as the Cardinal closer, the Cardinals wouldn't have got it anywhere close to bringing Mott later on. It seemed like it was almost middle of August before Mott started uh, closing out games. Dusty's going, throw me a strike, get out, get him out, get a double play ball. Might get his well. He's getting uh, gonna get the out, but uh, no double play there. Slowly hit, and that'll do it. Dusty Baker coming out. He'll make the change here. Hoover coming on. When we come back, it's nine nothing Cincinnati.
Craig on Monday night, game one. Part of our Chevy call to the pit. He went to the fastball and Craig took it to the seats in right. JJ's got three saves during the year. He's also got three wins to go along with five losses. ERA just over three at point oh nine. Earlier in the year he had a stretch of 26 and a third scoreless innings over 23 appearances. That was snapped on August 20th versus Arizona when he allowed a grand slam with Paul Goldschmidt. And then the grand slam. First game of this series to Alan Craig. On Monday, he got the blown save, third of an inning, one hit, the grand slam. He got two earned runs because he had a walk pre preceding that. Only threw nine pitches to do all that damage against him. Second plate appearance here for Colton Long. Colton still looking for his first. St. Louis base hit. A hit here at home. Two and oh. An hard independent race to give Colton Wong a real fair look. A couple of weeks of just playing every day. But in some ways the Cardinals are going to have to make a blind decision on him whether he's ready for next season to play every day. Numbers in the minor leagues would indicate he is. At second base, one out and a 3 2 pitch from Hoover. Driven out to right field, but the catch is made. Back to the bag goes Descalso at second. John Jay, one of the few regulars to still be in this game. He's one for three. Phillies over the Mets tonight, six to two. Rockies on top of San Francisco, five to one. Two to nothing, San Diego leading Arizona. That's in the bottom of the fourth. Told that in that Rockies game, Chassin with a no hitter, even though it's a 5 1 lead for the Rockies, no hitter is apparently there's three errors behind him. And five errors total in that game as Jay pops it foul out of play. We're down to Philadelphia that Derek Brown is through for the year where the Achilles injury. He can't catch a break, stay healthy, can he? No. Finally, he's come out and had a good year. And up to this point, stayed healthy. And their trainers know too much about Achilles. Isn't that the truth? And Ryan Howard. Hoover, the strikeout of Jay. 
That'll send us to the ninth. Nine to nothing Reds. clubhouse and you'll hear from Mike Matheny it's all coming up on Missouri Lottery Cardinals live after the game Salas continuing in this ball game and this is Chris Heisey One for six off of Salas. Wow. This is way out of here and just to the left. A Big Mac land. Long home run by Chris Heisey. Long home run by Heisey there. It's a ten nothing. Eat that ball a ton. And as you said, just left to the Big Mac land, a couple rows deep. Xavier Paul hitting for Ludwig. As they're down to their backup catcher now. Hundred and thirty one feet the uh, distance of the home run the hit speed ninety nine miles an hour. Sam McClear. He's warming up he'll have the ninth inning for Dusty Baker and the Reds. Seventy six feet was the uh, distance of a Hunter Pence home run yesterday. That's the longest in the big leagues. Did that in Colorado. There's a fly ball out to left. And Cosma makes the catch. Jay Bruce. 
He is our Budweiser player of the game. Two for four, home run and five RBIs. It was all done in the by the second inning. And pretty much the game was over by the second inning. Just didn't have it for Adam Wainwright tonight and shortest outing of his career. Jack Hanahan. Hanrahan is 0 for 1. Flew out to left field. Reds will have an off day tomorrow. Spend that in Colorado. Now with the Cardinals uh, losing tonight, if they don't come back, not over yet. Despite being down by 10 here in the ninth, they will have 29 games left and three teams separated by three and a half games. So you play all that time. Separated by three and a half after tonight. That's the way it's supposed to be. Makes it fun. Yeah. I mean, it's next road trip. Going to Pittsburgh for three games, a showdown for first place. Then you go to Cincinnati for four more. And the Cardinals have 19 games against currently under 500 teams. Well, I guess other than the Pirates. Pirates, we, once we finish the Pirates series, we, we come back home. <laughs> That's going to be a good weekend series, won't it? That was what? Can't September 6th. Get your tickets for that one. Third hit of the night. Came in swinging the bat well, and that's continued here in this series. And again's on 0 for 4. He's been on the disabled list twice this year. He's caught both of Homer Bailey's no hitters. Risk is still bothering him. The second time he went on the DL. Fly ball out to right. And the catch is made.
shutout in St. Louis by Cincinnati. And tonight they trail by the score of 10 to nothing. Sam Cure come in here, career high, 52nd appearance. Two wins, one loss. Been a very reliable reliever for Dusty. He recorded his first major league save and second professional league save on Thursday when he preserved a 2 1 win. He stranded 21 of 23 inherited runners, including the base loaded three times. Remember that one game in Cincinnati, August 4th, he allowed a season high five hits and four runs in one inning. And his other 50 appearances, he would have a 2.37 ERA. He's had a pair of season high 10 appearances that have been scoreless. First pitch to Matt Adams. He walked. First time up. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Ten to nothing Cincinnati. They picked up nine runs in the first two innings. The toughest outing of the season for Adam Wainwright. And Adams walked his first time up tonight. 0 for his last nine. Make it ten. Nice play. Nice Boy, Xavier Paul just came in to play left field and wouldn't you think you were show Dusty Baker you're a little hungry and make this routine play? That ball hung up a long time and the shortstop has to make a very difficult play. It should have been a routine fly ball for the left fielder. Robinson popped out to the second baseman. He's 0 for 1 tonight. I haven't seen Chapman in this series. Devastating as Chapman is, and he's had a high ERA on the road. It's odd the the splits are blaring the difference. Yeah. That's why they're really a 500 club on the road and really play so well at home because he's been so dominant. Late in their ball game, they can just ignite an offense. This is the break we are looking for. It's the break the team was looking for, huh? Yep. Cosman is 0 for his last 24. But that walk to Robinson made him very mad and hungry. He's going to break his streak right now. Start a real positive one. 
<laughs> he gets a strike. Dares to throw him a strike. A new hit streak. Up the middle, no. When you're struggling, you're struggling. Just like a sure base hit. The only play Bozart had was a flip and the force play to the gold glover. Phillips. Looks like it's going to be that first hit, but they turn it into an out. Just ahead of the speedy Robinson. Nice play by Koza. Dan Bolino with another good call. No doubt he's been on target after he botched the one earlier. Freeze chops it towards third. It stays down. And it also stays fair. Cosmo on his way to third. Freeze on his way to second. And safe. <laughs> wow. I think he's truly was safe. But the ball beat him. Phillips can't believe it. He had the glove sitting there. But he went in with head first in his hands. Got to the bag ahead of the tag. His tourist first a lot played that into a double. Watch. He puts the glove down. But his hands reach the bag ahead of the tag. So another excellent call by Dan Bellino. Anything else, Dan? The game has been extended here. I told you. They made me mad with that walk. Now it's Rob Johnson. For that E5, as his tour is backed on him, let the ball play him. So, I mean, it is the correct call. Now Johnson broke his 0 for 11 with a base hit. First time up back in the third. One for three in the night. Are you with me, Dan? I'm with you. You're with the comeback, aren't you? I am with you. The crowd's into it. Three and oh. The really Cardinal Faith will leave it on their feet. All believers. Three and one. Borderline call. Sam from Jeff City. You betcha. You betcha. And a 
ground ball to Phillips. Makes the plays. The Cardinals win the series but drop the finale. And finish up the homestand. A very good homestand as they beat not only the Cincinnati Reds of the series but also the Atlanta Braves. They won both series here in this homestand. You won five straight series. Enjoy the off day. Get ready for a fun road trip to Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. And the beauty of baseball is you play nearly every day. You can put this loss aside. It's on to the post game show. 10 nothing our final tonight in favor of Cincinnati. <laughs>